Hello. For those of you who've seen some of my videos, you might know that I've had my half pan watercolour collection in these two big tins. These were Dermot pencil tins, which I sprayed. And I've put magnet on the back. I've been really enjoying having them like this, but I'm going away tomorrow. And so it's time to put together a travel palette again. I've pulled out my old travel palette. And so I'm going to fill this and put together some other supplies as well. I've pushed back these metal pan holders a little bit and because I've got the extra depth on the bottom of the pans because of the magnet. I wanted them as far back as possible. And they magnetise nicely to this. I can also fill in the central space as well. Because my paint pans are so easily interchangeable now, I'm happy just to pick colours for this trip alone. So I've gone to Google and we're going to the island of Kefalonia. So I've never been there before, I don't know very much about it. But I'm just looking at the colours and I'll let that guide the type of colours I put in to my travel palette. So I've pulled out a few, I have a bit of a swatch with them. I'm very light on browns though, so I'll just see if these are the best options. I've switched a few around, so this is my final choice of the colours. So I've gone for Snellio's Warm Grey as a sand colour. And I decided to include Holbein's Jean Brilliant number one. I've not had this in a mixing palette before, but this is Magello Mission Gold's Permanent Yellow Light. I seem to be unable to write today. Sorry about the terrible writing. And then this is the first time that I've tried using this paint since it's dried in a half pan. But this is the Lutea Orange and it re-wets fine, so I was really pleased about that. I'd heard somewhere that they were harder to re-wet. I'm going to have to squash these up a little bit. So for like a warm mixing red, this is Snellier's French Vermilion. As a cool mixing red, I'm just including Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Rose. Just because I know it well and it's an easy one. Whoops, this is not an elegant swatching sheet today. But this is Holbein's Shell Pink. Then I probably don't need this in as well, but I just really like it. This is Holbein's Bright Rose. This is so pigmented, this paint. It's 
This is Magello Mission Gold Quinacridone Violet. And then one of my favourite dark colours for shadows and rocks and things. It's A Gallows Naturno. This is Daniel Smith's French Ultramarine. I think it's a good warm mixing blue and it's got a medium kind of granulation. And my favourite sky blue is Verdita and this one is Holbein's. And this will take the place of a cool mixing blue. And this is Windsor & Newton's Aqua Green. And I picked Snellier's Turquoise Green. And I usually include some kind of dark forest. But this time I've gone with A Gallows Harbour Blue. I've got A Gallows Fig Green for a lighter foliage colour. And this is A Gallows Olive Green Deep for my mid foliage colours. And for a lovely deep dark foliage shadow kind of colour, I've gone for Rembrandt's Dusk Yellow. I've only included one brown as such, and that's Daniel Smith's Environmentally Friendly brown iron oxide but it's good at mixing with other colours so I can get all the other browns that I need and for my last colour I was going to include um, my Marie Blue's Payne's Grey which is quite a blue Payne's Grey but at the last minute I thought it would be fun to include this blue which is the Lutea Blue, and it's a really dark, interesting one. I thought it would be great fun to have that in the palette too. So that's what I've decided to go with for my watercolour paints. And I've done a little card that can just sit in the palette. So for the rest of the kit, I'm going to keep it very similar to what I took to Nepal last year. I found that it worked really well for me, so I don't have much alterations I want to make. So in this front pocket, I put some of my favourite pens and pencils and things. I've got a Lamy Safari. This is black waterproof ink. It's carbon platinum ink. White Posca pen. It's the fine PC1MR. I've got my Uniball Air Micro Pen, which is waterproof black ink, and it's a finer nib than my fountain pen gives. My pencil, a 0.5 Pentel P205 pencil. Then my two travel brushes that I really enjoy is the Escoda Ultimo number 10. And this is a silver black velvet number six. So in the front pocket here, I just put a rubber sharpener in a plastic bag. It's just a Coom double pencil sharpener. I've got like a reusable, washable paintbrush cloth. And that'll just sit in the top there. My palette goes in the bottom there. Actually, I'll pull out a few coloured pencils to put in here as well. And 
And then in the main compartment, which is kind of very fine fleece lined, I've got room for a C. White's travel journal. This is the water pot that I use. I'm sure I'll be carrying separate water, so I'm not too worried about that for the kit. That just pops up like that. And the lid is great for keeping everything else dry. And then it's empty at the moment, but I'll choose some colors, some of Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons as well. And that can just fit in the top there. So that's the main kit. And I'll probably take along an extra sketchbook as well. So I've got the watercolour one and then just a rougher, kind of messier one that I'm less precious about. So it's not too bad. So for my Caran d'Ache Neo Colour Tin, I'm going to include a Neo Colour 1 as like a, a wax resist. And I'll just include some of my favourite landscapey colours of Neo Colour 2s. And again, I pull out a few favourite colour pencils. From the light fast range, I like some of the dark greens best. So these are colours that I often add for details on top of watercolour paintings. So the luminance black. Luminance paints grey. This is the French grey 30%. sepia and then I've got genuine cobalt blue and for greens I've got forest ivy and foliage I've got Holbein soft white and then I thought for a couple of pops of colour, I'd include Holbein's Ice Green and Holbein's Coral. Yeah. 
So I'm sorry, that's probably a bit repetitive for people who have seen me put a travel kit together before. But I thought I might as well record it, seeing as I was doing it. And ads tends to be fairly normal when I go away. I always put my travel kit together before I've packed. And I do need to go and figure out what clothes and things I'm taking to now, as we're leaving tomorrow. Thanks ever so much for joining me. Bye!